tonight on JP Roofing Fan Nation. Touchdown, North Allegheny. Will high school girls get their shot on the gridiron? Hopefully make it up uh, sanctioned sports soon. The girls flag football phenomenon that's sweeping the 4-1-2. Then a diehard Steeler fan to the end. I'm going to die with the Steeler collection. Check out this massive collection. Meet the first family of the Pittsburgh Grand Prix racing, how it all started, and where it's heading next. Plus, another sick 4-1-2 tattoo spanning this girl's guns. And a black and gold summer sipper you won't find anywhere else. Get the recipe. Cheers, guys. This show is about you, 412 fans. This is Fan Nation, and here we go. This is Pittsburgh, the greatest sports town around. To prove it, we're hitting the road to meet you. The loudest, the proudest, the without a doubtest, best sports fans in the world. This is Fan Nation. Welcome to JP Roofing Fan Nation. I'm Daisy J. And I'm Rich Walsh, and tonight we're celebrating you, 412 fans, as well as highlighting the things that make our city so special. So let's start with a fan. This one, an impressionable seven year old from Virginia. At the time, he rooted for the only player in Team he knew, Joe Namath and the New York Jets. Until, that is, he heard tales of a scrappy bunch called The, the Steelers, Steelers, who ignited his curiosity, his passion, which evolved into an obsession that has lasted a lifetime. Pushing 5,000 Steeler artifacts. Yes, so it's an obsession. Anything that's officially licensed NFL product, the rarer, the better, the more unique, the, I can't believe they made that, you know, that kind of stuff. He calls it the Immaculate Collection, and it's possibly the rarest private collection of Steelers memorabilia in existence. At first, you know, this was the major room in the house, um, fireplace, etc. but I've never used it for anything other than just the collection, and now the collection is spread throughout the entire house. There's not a rhyme or reason to it, really. There used to be, but it's kind of gotten out of control. I sometimes don't remember where certain things are. Like, I know I have that but I gotta look for it. Shelves upon shelves, rooms upon rooms. Donnie's lifelong passion is hunting down the rarest dealer's ephemera ever made. I know that there are people that just go crazy for jerseys and frame jerseys, and I'm, I'm not that guy. What I would call my white whale was the 1977 Free Spirit Banana Seat Boys bike from the Sears catalog. I love the older vintage 60s, 50s stuff when they weren't really making that much of it. Uh, so it's harder to find. I don't know if you do know, I, I'm a historical archaeologist. So my whole profession is centered around dating things. And I have taken that obsession into my own Steeler collection. I, I have memorized maker's marks, uh, the typology. The Steelers don't change their look very much, but yet there is subtle changes throughout the, the decades. And I can instantly look at an item and kind of know when it dates to. I mean, you could see that maybe these trash cans above me, they look like the same trash can, but they're, they're not. <laughs> have like subtle differences. Even more amazing, Donnie's not the only collector like this. He runs a Facebook page that brings together fans with insane collections just like his. It's nice to know I'm not alone. And that's one reason I started the Facebook group to see if there was anyone else out there that had this kind of obsession with collecting. So there's a core group of us, maybe 10 to 20 of us that connect across the East Coast and really make sure to trade or get stuff into each other's hands if we had doubles of it. One of my archaeological mentors was in his, it was 89 when he passed away and literally up until the end he was still gleefully collecting the ceramics that he collected and, and I just saw that as, you know, why, why are we alive? We, we need to be happy about something and this is something that makes me very happy so I'm going to keep it going till the end. Next stop, the Garden State, New Jersey. There you'll find a surprisingly strong Steelers presence. Yeah, the fans belong to a number of clubs around the state who meet year-round, not just during football season. And on game day, the clubs are united around the black and gold. New Jersey has the Pittsburgh Steelers covered. Steeler Nation is well represented when it comes to Jersey, beginning with the Brick City Steelers. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Brick Mob. Shouts out to the Jersey Gems. Shout out to the Renegades. Renegades. Let's go. East Coast, South Jersey, Steel Nation. One more time for Jersey City Outlaws. And last but not least, not least. Hearts of Steel, Jersey Chapter. Jersey Chapter. 
There may be several clubs stretching across the Garden State, but these crews have come together and formed a Steelers Alliance, helping each other's communities, supporting one another's causes, all thanks to their collective love of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steeler fan base is the best in the world, you know. No matter how bad things may be around the world, the Steelers fans are going to stick together and we're going to come together for, for good causes. We started a way to unify all the Steeler groups. Even when we do what we call the round robin here, where we go to each other's uh, own establishments and we support. One Sunday throughout the season, each club, you know, picked a Sunday that they would host uh, all the Steeler clubs in New Jersey. And we all came together each each and every Sunday that someone hosted. We all came together and just, just to support one another. Harris in East Jersey, they're South Jersey. So what we did was we got a bus and we took a bus load of fans and we flooded their bar. Oh, it was beautiful. Shout out to those guys, Brick City Steelers. They um, had a, a barbecue in a park in Newark, New Jersey. That barbecue was so huge. There was a couple hundred people there, all Steeler fans. It was such a big party that there were actually people from Pittsburgh that drove to come to that barbecue. That's just how we show support for one another. Love. And love. That's what it's all about for the most part, support and love, you know what I mean? You know, we all are all over the place, all over Jersey. We all stationed all over the place, but when something's going on, we all come together like this. You know, so it's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing. Hi, Fia Nation. I'm Sue Leland, and I love Pittsburgh so much that I put skin in the game. This entire arm is all Pittsburgh. It started with, I needed, I needed, had to have the P for the Pirates, and I had to have Pittsburgh. Sue, she is textbook Pittsburgh. The entire sleeve dedicated, that's a lot to her town, and, and that goes back to her upbringing and, and those memories that she has. The house I grew up in is very close to PNC Park. We used to watch fireworks on the rooftop of the third floor. The fireworks on my arm absolutely have to do with watching them from the rooftop. She looks at that art and can relive that and take a moment and, and go back in time and, and remember those uh, special moments in time. So my grandpa worked at Heinz 34 years. He was the first man I loved, my grandpa. Iron City Beer. My grandfather would go to the beer distributor and that was returnable bottles back then. So he would put it in a wagon, the empty bottles, and he would take me with them. I was allowed to sit on the empty bottles on the way to the beer distributor. On the way home, I had to walk because he had a full case of Iron City Beer. The incline. And then this is my, for the Elko clock. And it had to be 412, of course, for our area coach now. And that, if you're Pittsburgh, you know what that means. <laughs> I have a pickle too, a Heinz pickle. So today I'm gonna get the Clemente Bridge put in right here. People are proud to be from Pittsburgh, to dedicate skin, uh, to go through the pain. Not everybody does that. I feel like Pittsburgh uh, fans are very dedicated and proud to show off where they're from and they're not ashamed of it. Coming up, car racing is in their blood. It's only right that there's at least four or five Pattersons that race in it every year. Pittsburgh's first family of vintage car racing when Fan Nation continues.